So in July of 2016, Spark released Spark 2.0. And let's talk about what's new and what new capabilities exist in MLlib now. So the main thing with Spark 2.0 is that they're moving people more and more toward data frames and data sets. Data sets and data frames are kind of used interchangeably sometimes. Technically, a data frame is a data set of row objects. They're kind of like RDDs, but the only difference is that whereas an RDD just contains unstructured data, every row of an RDD can contain pretty much anything, a data set has a defined schema to it. So a data set knows ahead of time exactly what columns of information exist in each row of, of that little RDD of that data set and what types those are. So because it knows about the actual structure of that data set ahead of time, it can optimize things more efficiently. It also lets us think of the contents of this data set as a little mini database. Well, actually a very big database if it's on a cluster, right? And that means we can do things like issue SQL queries on it. So this creates a higher level API with which we can query and analyze large massive data sets on a Spark cluster. So it's pretty cool stuff. It's faster, it has more opportunities for optimization, and it has a higher level API that's often easier to work with. Now going forward in Spark 2.0, MLlib is pushing data frames as its primary API. So this is kind of the way of the future here. So let's take a look at how it works. So I've gone ahead and opened up the Spark linear regression.py file in Canopy here. So let's walk through it a little bit here. So you see for one thing, we're using ML instead of MLlib and that's the new data frame based APIs in there. So for in this example, what we're gonna do is implement linear regression and linear regression is just a way of fitting a line to a set of data. So what we're gonna do in this exercise is take a bunch of fabricated data that we have in two dimensions and try to fit a line to it with a linear model. And what we're gonna do is actually separate our data into two sets, one for building the model and one for evaluating the model and we'll compare how well this linear model does to actually predicting real values. So to do that, first of all in Spark 2, if you're gonna be doing stuff with the Spark SQL interface and using data sets, you're gonna be using a Spark session object instead of a Spark context. So to set one up, you do something like this. You can say Spark, that's gonna be the name of our Spark session. Builder config. Now this bit is only necessary on Windows and in Spark 2.0, kind of works around a little bug that they have, to be honest. So if you're on Windows, make sure you have a C temp folder if you wanna run this. Go create that now if you need to. If you're not on Windows, you can delete that whole bit here that I've highlighted, okay? Cause it's not gonna be necessary and it won't work give it an app name, and get or create. Now, this is interesting because once you've created a Spark session, if it terminates unexpectedly, it can actually recover from that the next time that you run it. So if we have a checkpoint directory, it can actually restart where it left off using get or create. All right, now we're gonna use this regression.txt file that we, I've included with the course materials. And all that is is a text file that has comma delimited values of two columns. And they're just two columns of more or less randomly linearly correlated data. And it can represent whatever you want. Let's imagine that it represents heights and weights, for example. So the first column might represent heights, the second column might represent weights. So in the lingo of machine learning, we talk about labels and features, where labels are usually the thing that you're trying to predict, and features are a set of known attributes of the data that you use to make a prediction from. So in this example, maybe heights are the labels and the features are the weights. Maybe we're trying to predict heights based on your weight. It can be anything, it doesn't matter. This is all normalized down to like data between negative one and one. So there's no real meaning to the scale of the data any, anywhere. You can pretend it means anything you want really. So to do this, to use this with MLlib, we need to transform our data into the format it expects. So the first thing we're gonna do is split that data up with this map function that just splits each line into two distinct values in a list. And then we're gonna map that to the format that MLlib expects. So that's going to be a floating point label and then a dense vector of the feature data. Now in this case, we only have one bit of feature data, the weight. So we have a vector that just has one thing in it. But even if it's just one thing, the MLlib linear regression model requires a dense vector there. Okay, this is like a labeled point in the older API, but we have to kind of do it the hard way here. Now next we need to actually assign names to those columns. So here's the syntax for doing that. We're gonna tell MLlib that these two columns in my resulting RDD here actually correspond to the label and the features. And then I can convert that RDD to a data frame object. So at this point I have an actual data frame or if you will a data set that contains two columns, label and features, where the label is a floating point height and the features column is a dense vector of floating point weights. And that is the format required by MLlib. And 
MLlib can be pretty picky about this stuff, so it's important that you pay attention to these formats. All right, now like I said, we're going to split our data in half. So we're going to do a 50-50 split between training data and test data. So this returns back two data frames, one that I'm going to use to actually create my model and one that I'm going to use to evaluate my model. I will next create my actual linear regression model with a few standard parameters here that I've set. We're going to call that LUR, linear regression. And then I will fit that model to the set of data that I held aside for training, the training data frame. And that gives me back a model that I can use to make predictions from. So let's go ahead and do that. I will call model.transform.test with testdf. And what that's going to do is predict the heights based on the weights in my testing data. Okay, so the testing data set, I actually have the known labels, the actual correct heights. And this is going to add a new column to that data frame called predictions that has the predicted values based on that linear model. Now I'm going to do a couple of things with this, so I'm going to cache the results. And now I can just extract them and compare them together. So let's pull out the prediction column, just using dot select, just like you would in SQL. And then I'm going to actually transform that data frame and pull out the RDD from it and use that to map it to just a plain old RDD full of uh, floating point heights and uh, floating point heights in this case, right? So these are the predicted heights. And then we're going to get to the actual heights from the label column. And then we can zip them back together and just print them out side by side and see how well it does. Now, mind you, this is kind of a convoluted way of doing it. I did this to be more consistent with the previous example, but a simpler approach would be to just actually select prediction and label together into a single RDD that maps out those two columns together. And then I don't have to zip them up, but either way it works. So let's see if it works. Let's go up to run. Uh, tools rather, canopy command prompt. And we'll type in spark dash submit spark linear regression dot py. And let's see what happens. A little bit more of a sort of upfront time to actually run these APIs with data sets, but once they get going, they're very fast. All right, and there you have it. So here we have our actual and predicted values side by side. You can see they're not too bad. You know, they tend to be more or less in the same ballpark. So there you have it, a linear regression model in action using Spark 2.0, using the new data frame based API for MLlib. So more and more, you'll be using these APIs going forward with MLlib in Spark. So make sure you opt for these when you can. All right, and that's it. That's MLlib in Spark, a way of actually distributing massive computing tasks across an entire cluster for doing machine learning on big data sets. So good skill to have. Let's move on.